Mark Thomas here. Hey, I wanted to walk you through a couple of my thoughts on COVID 2019, particularly how do you interpret the COVID process guidance? I get a lot of questions about this, so I wanted to throw together this quick video to walk you through some of my thoughts on how to interpret this. Of course, first, we have four publications as part of the launch of COVID 2019. We have the COVID Introduction to Methodology, we have the Governance and Management Objectives. We have the design guide, and finally, we have the implementation guide. Our focus here in this short video is to talk about the governance and management objectives guide, which I really, really like. This is very new, brand new to COVID-2019, so we're going to jump in and talk a little bit more about this. In order for information and technology to contribute to our enterprise goals, we must have governance and management objectives, and they should be achieved some basic concepts here, a governance or management objective always relates to one process and a series of related components. We'll talk about those in a second. A governance objective relates to a governance process while the management objective relates to a management process. We'll take a look at that next. You look at this layout on the left-hand side, we have governance objectives. You might remember these as the processes, of course, in COVID-5. We call this EDM or Evaluate, Direct, and Monitor. To the right of that, you see Management Objectives. Align, Plan, and Organize, Build, Acquire, and Implement, Deliver Service and Support, and finally, Monitor, and Evaluate, and Assess. So those are the Governance and Management Objectives. Remember, each of those related to one process, but the process is part of what we call governance components. I really like these a lot. You might remember these as enablers in COVID-5. In fact, in COVID-5, we loved enablers, but we really couldn't figure out how to associate them or to leverage them as a part of our governance framework. Now we call them governance components, and these components are processes, organizational structures, information flows and items, people, skills, and competencies, principles, policies, frameworks, culture, ethics, and behavior, and of course, services, infrastructure, and applications. So what we want to do is take each one of these components and associate them with each of our 40 governance and management objectives, and I'm going to use process as the entry point to talk about each one of these. So next, we'll take a look at the actual governance and management objectives publication, and I'll walk you through how these components associate to each of those objectives. Let's jump into the governance and management objectives. What we're looking at here is the second of the publications I showed you a few slides ago, and I'll walk you through one of the governance objectives here. One of my favorite objectives is the management objective DSS-03 managed problems. So what you're looking at here, of course, the focus area up on the top right says we're in the COVID core model. Like before, it gives us a description and a purpose statement. What you'll see below that is that this management objective supports the achievement of a set of primary enterprise and alignment goals. This goes back to the goals cascade. So it links back to those enterprise and of course alignment goals. And it gives us a set of suggested metrics to show us how well we're accomplishing those goals. You remember that we had components of a governance system. Component number one was process. So from the process component perspective, this goes back to what you might recognize from COVID-5 when we broke down the processes. We have management practices. Remember, there are management practices in DSS-03 because we're talking about management as opposed to governance objectives. DSS-03 has five management practices, and of course, it gives us this is practice number one with some example metrics. And as before in COVID-5, it breaks that down into activities. What I like about this level is it breaks down the capability level over on the right-hand side down to the activity level. One of the things that I really like is for each one of these practices, it gives us related guidance. And you see below, we've got related guidance from ISO 20,000. So we just looked at DSS 03.01, as I mentioned before, there are five management practices in this particular governance and management objective, and there's practice number two. 
the SSO302. We won't cover each one of these because you understand the overall makeup of these. But again, it gives us the activities and related guidance. You see DSS-03 with example metrics, activities, and of course the, the suggested capability level. DSS-04, and of course we have one more DSS-05, which talks about uh, perform proactive problem management. Again, it does have the related guidance for us, as well as the capability levels. That was the first component. Remember, we had a bunch of components here. The second one we have is organizational structures. We're given the RACI chart at this level. Now, notice it only gives us R and A because the consultant informed you determine at your organization. Of course, you see related guidance and any detailed references if they're available. That's the second component of the governance system. The third component is information flows and items. This is the information. This is where we now see the inputs and outputs to each one of our practices that we identified within the process. And as always, we see related guidance. In this case, there's no related guidance from the industry that we are referencing from COVID-2019. The next one we see People, skills, and competencies gives us the potential skills, the related guidance. Notice there's a lot of information here from uh, the skills framework for the information age. And of course, we have policies and procedures. That's one of our components. It gives us suggestions and related guidance here. The last two of our governance components, culture, ethics, and behavior, it gives us information here. No related guidance, of course, on this one. And then finally, services, infrastructure, and applications. So one of the things you might notice is that for every one of these governance and management objectives, it breaks them down by the governance components starting at process. This is valuable information for you to be able to design your process, leverage other frameworks, and be able to set up a control environment to be able to manage and govern each one of those governance and management objectives. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I hope this has been helpful for you. And I hope you now understand how the components are related to governance and management objectives and how you might be able to interpret that component guidance specifically for processes as well as the other ones. I'm glad to share this information with you. Please feel free to keep in touch at my website, scout.com, or follow me on Twitter at scout one Thank you very much.